Well hello there everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft monthly challenge. So as usual we're going to be starting a random new world just going through doing a few bits and pieces because we do need to start in creative because we need to give ourselves a few bits and pieces but it's a random seed hard difficulty I'm putting keep inventory on because if we do die in this challenge it's handy to know what you died with when you, you know, what, what your score was basically. So we just need to quickly give ourselves a few items, uh, a diamond sword, a diamond pick, some food, like golden carrots, one golden chest plate, that's very important, and a shield, a stack of cobblestone for just bridging around, and the bits that you need to make a portal, because this, this challenge takes place exclusively in the nether, and it's all about killing as many mobs as possible and getting as many unique drops as possible but all the drops matter it all adds up and we have a 10 minute timer to do this and we're off to a flying start by getting set on fire thank you very much nether right what can we find in a warped forest well it's mostly enderman but uh, i've had a few practice runs on this when I say a few, I mean a lot. And uh, you'll see some of those at the end in my death compilation. And yeah, so we're just going to kill a few of these Endermen. Because anything that a mob drops when it dies is technically good. To count towards the score. So that, that piece of, like, Nylium there, that would count. That mushroom that other fellow was, counting, uh, was holding would count. But uh, he's gone now. And... So anything that they were carrying does count. So starting in a warped forest is very good because, yeah, he, oh, is that the mushroom? Did he plant the mushroom before he died? That's annoying, isn't it? Well, anyway, uh, while we're here, we might as well try and see if we can get... Yes, he's got some of that weed stuff. Let's kill him. If he drops it, then that counts. A few, a few spare pearls wouldn't go miss, just in case I need to get somewhere distant. But... We did get the weed stuff, so that's all good. And striders, they can drop string. Yes, he did drop string. How very convenient. So, um, just having a quick look around because, well, really, to get a good score in this um, this challenge, you need to find lots of different biomes and try and get as many unique items as possible because each unique item is worth 10 points. So, like, we really want to find different unique things. Piglins can drop quite a lot of different things as well with all the armor that they can potentially have. So we're just going to have to deal with these. A little bit of help from the uh, zombified piglin there. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, a ghast. These are really annoying. And uh, hopefully we can get hold of this guy because he's sort of spawned in a, a low roof area. Come on. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, did I kill him? I don't even know if I killed that first one. Oh, there's another one. There's always a couple of ghasts on you in the nether. Wherever you go, there's always a couple. Right. Uh, Zombify piglins. They can carry at least four different things that I can think of. Rotten flesh and gold nuggets and gold ingots and gold swords. And, well, we got a gold sword from that guy. So I might have to go kill some more of those. But a magma cube... You will do, yeah, and yeah, the little ones don't drop magma cream, as far as I'm aware, but the medium and the large ones can, so we'll take that. Uh, I, I really don't like the baby zigglins, they really are very fast and very annoying. Oh, another ghast. He spawned in and he almost can't move. Paralyzed. And that's another couple. I'd already got a ghast here and a gunpowder, but few extra didn't hurt anybody. Now it's important to note that every duplicate item you get is only worth one point so therefore it's not really worth your while trying to farm mobs over and over for the same drops because they're only worth one point when you need to go and spread your wings and find lots of different places. But I'm going to go after this guy because the potential for some gold armor was too great and oh, the potential of a crossbow. I don't have one of those yet. The crossbow guys aren't too bad but the, uh, the sword guys, they really hurt when they do hit you. But the uh, the crossbows are so slow and weak that they're just not really a, a concern. So, looking around, uh, well, all we've got really to play with is lots and lots of zombified piglins. So, I think I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do it. Oh! 
Now, uh, you could block up two there, but I find it's best to block up three, just in case. Because, you know, these things, they can go wrong, horribly wrong, when you only block up two. So, we're just going to kill these guys. Hope, hope and hope that we get some... a gold ingot? Did we get a gold ingot? Anyone else interested? No, the rest of them are about 20 blocks away, so they're just not, they're just not bothered. Um, so, what else can we do? Well, there's another ghast. I know it's only potentially worth another two points, but if left unchecked, those things are very, very annoying. So, we're going to have to deal with him. And we're leading into a soul sand valley. One of my least favourite biomes, but, you know, sometimes you got to do these things. And I don't really want to go after another ghast, do I? There's some more zombie piglins. I could try to get another gold ingot. Like, well, a gold ingot, that would be worth 10 points. But I'm going to quickly hop down and check out the Soul Sand Valley and just get a few drops from the skeletons in there. Because, again, the skeletons, they can be equipped with armor when you're on hard mode. So it's always worth trying your luck. There's a few down there I can see already. And they can have such a wide array of armor that it's always worth trying your luck. They could have leather, they could have gold, they could have even chainmail. So what can we find here? Skeleton, you've not got any armor. And I really don't want to mess with any more endermen. They, uh, they suck. Skeletons as well, they are annoying because they just hold their ground. They just stand there and you've got to come to them. And on the soul sand, it's just painful. Even with the shield, it's just, oh, it just takes so long. Come on, just be nice. Uh-oh. Oh no, no, there's a ghast. That's the other thing about the Soul Sand Valleys. No! Oh, well, that didn't last very long. That was only just over six minutes. But what have we got? We've got some different things. So I'm going to quickly look through and work out what I've got duplicates of and what's uh, not even a mob drop, and what's an original. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just quickly look through all these then. Just bear with me while I organize my inventory and uh, so we've got some of those, a couple of gold swords that are duplicates, and a couple of rotten flesh. So all in all, we've got 13 different unique items from that run there, which is 130 points, not bad. And then adding up all the rest of these other bits and pieces that we've got comes to 23 other items. So that gives us a grand total of 153 points for our score, which is pretty respectable. It's uh, by far and away the best I have managed to achieve so far on my runs. So I'm gonna stick with 153, I'm happy with that. Uh, I honestly don't think I would improve it no matter how much I, uh, I try it because this is a really tough one. For every one successful run in this, there will be at least five or six which end in absolute abject failure because the mobs in the nether hit so hard and when you're practically naked, save for a golden chest plate on hard mode, you're looking at around about five to six hearts per hit. So you're not gonna last very long and on bedrock, your health regenerates painfully slowly. But anyway, I promised you a death montage, so here it is. I hope you enjoyed this challenge and I'll see you soon for another one. Ready.